by you saying this is the way walk in God has a mission for your life but you're only going to find it if he is the ultimate complete authority I was talking with someone a few years ago and they said we were outlining looking at the study of the word together and they saw what God was calling them to do. It was very clear. It was in the Word. There's no ambiguity. They said, yeah, this is according to God, this is what I need to be doing in my life. It wasn't me just telling them. They found it with God. And they said, if I do that, I can't take care of my life. I can't do what God's called me to do. But no, 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 they didn't say that. They said, I can't take care of my life. I can't do what I've got to do. I can't keep up my house. I can't keep up my family. I can't do all the stuff that I'm supposed to do in my life. I can't do that. And what they had said was, in essence, I am not willing to hate everything else in comparison to Jesus. I'm not willing to trust Him to be my leader even when I can't see what's about ready to happen. I'm not willing to trust that he can supply all my needs according to his riches in Christ. Does Christ have that kind of authority in your life? If you're claiming to be a Christian and he does not, and you're okay with that, you are in rebellion and sin, you need to repent, and the people who are here who are not followers of Jesus are getting a really bad picture of what Jesus is about. And I will even go so far as to say you will be responsible for misrepresenting the name of Christ because what you're exhibiting is blasphemy. Because you're taking the name of Jesus on yourself and then tarnishing it by blatant rebellion, saying, no, I'm not going to do what you called me to do. This person I talked about would consider themselves a Christian, maybe even a good Christian. And yet if they are not willing to follow what God has said and allow Him to be the ultimate authority in their life, they're living in blasphemy. Is that so? I don't say this out of condemnation. I've been in blasphemy myself. I don't say that to soft sell and say it's okay. It's not. We are human. We are broken people and God has refined us. But I challenge you, if you take the name of Jesus on yourself, get serious about going to Him in repentance and saying, God, I'm misrepresenting your name. I can't fix it, but I give you permission to come in and change who I am and be the supreme authority in my life above my pain, my relationships, above my quest for significance and safety, everything, I put it on you. Change and turn my heart. If you're here checking out the God thing, look, I'm supposed to, at this point, try to sell you on being a Christian. And it is awesome. Having God as the focal point, as the master, gives such incredible peace and freedom, it's completely worth it. Going on a mission that actually impacts the lives of other people, gives such value and meaning to life, it's amazing. But, let me tell you this. This is not for the weak and thin at heart. He's saying to you, look, either get in or get out. He's looking at his greatest crowd back in Luke chapter 14 saying, guys, I love that everyone's following me. Now shut up and go home unless you're serious. <laughs> That's the attitude. Verse 25. Go to my side of this. Hate everything else by comparison. Thanks for all coming and have a great week. It's not simple, but let me tell you something. You want to have real relationships? Find your focus in God. I'll tell you, for my wife and I, the more we've found our identity in Christ, the more we're able to love each other. It's amazing. Because when you're trying to get your significance off of someone else, you can't love them. You can't love them. When you're filled up with love, you give love to them easily. You can't love really, deeply, truly, until you're filled up with God. Purpose? You have more purpose than you know what to do with. 